we say hello to Jeff Darlington of the Miami Herald. And to make our inaugural pick, we welcome Jeff Darlington, the beat writer for the Miami Herald. Let's go to the uh, nicely tanned Jeff Darlington now. Trey Wingo here. Jeff Darlington of the Miami Herald there. Jeff, thanks for being with us. Again, now for our daily dose of NFL headlines. We bring three of the best beat writers from the NFL together. And Jeff, we're going to start with you. I think they're getting Ricky Williams ready to go. There is a little bit of a confrontation there going on, no matter what Jason Taylor wants to say. Watch for Greg Camarillo. Remember his name. I said it about Wes Welker a couple years ago. I'm saying it now about Greg Camarillo. I think this guy eventually will be something special in the NFL. All right, Jeff Darlington, very good. These guys are trying to psych themselves out of what is absolutely atrociously cold out here. <laughs> he continues to look efficient in his second start, 11 for 15. I don't think you deal him for a fourth round pick. I, I just, I think that Jason Taylor is worth more at this point. Last year, they rushed 299 yards on this Dolphins team in Dolphins Stadium. And if they can do that again, the Dolphins aren't going to have a chance. They need to stop the run. I had the chance to talk to Stephen Ross and Wayne Ezinger, the two owners right now. Stephen I talked to Ryan Fowler, the team's linebacker. I had a chance to talk last night with their rookie left tackle, Ryan Clady. I called Brady Quinn last night to find out what he thought about managing. I caught up with JT this week and talked to him about it. I wanted to know one thing, do you regret it? But at this point, I don't think they want to call this season a failure. I think they want to get through it. Pennington will be their starter at week one. And I think they'd like to see Pennington as their starter at week 16. Next season, though, if Penny can step up, that could be a different story. If you want to call it a breakout game last week, you don't know if it's a breakout game until he does it again, until he continues to do it. We've seen some good things from Ted Ginn since he was drafted. Not until last week, though, did we see the culmination of what he's capable to do between big play and speed. Let's see if it happens again today. I do like what Tony Sperano said, though. He got very objective about the reasoning. This is the start of it. I mean, when you think about what they did last year when they started to build the trenches, I mean, I think they're going to continue to try to build the trenches. I think the run defense, obviously, was the thing that gave up this loss last time against Baltimore. So I think the Dolphins will end up winning this game. And it's all going to come down to Week 17, Dolphins, Jets, in the middle end. The Lions are going to get blown out today if the Titans come out the way they anticipate coming out. At Ohio State, Ginn actually used to run something called the Shot Ginn Formation. I would imagine that during the draft that they're actually going to try to address that offensive line. They're going to continue to try to lock up depth there. And we'll make this Bill Parcells Appreciation Day here in Miami this year. Although, I've been told by plenty of people, just don't trust them too much. <laughs> but keep in mind, this team is not playing the game colder than 67 degrees. And now we're talking about the coldest game in Dolphins history. I mean, the coldest game in the history of this organization after not playing in a game 67 degrees or colder. Well, I'm going to let you go. Warm, I, I can't say even feel my fingers. Out the cold weather. <laughs> All the way back, Jeff Darlington covering the Dolphins. Jeff Darlington, Miami Herald. There you go. The latest report, so that could help. Jeff Darlington, thank you for the update on Dolphins.